Hi, how are you going? My name's Tech. Welcome to my channel Bootlosophy. And today I'll be reviewing the Soto Odessa Western Boot. This is going to be a short review because I really can't find out too much about this boot. If you've watched my other videos or been following me on Instagram, you know that while I've owned boots before, I really started getting into quality boots in 2021 and since then I've amassed a big collection of mostly Goodyear welted boots. This Odessa boot by American company Soto was an early purchase, way back in the pre butazoic era of early 2020, March 20 to be exact. Now, a little history of me and boots. The first boot of mine that I remember were a pair of kickers in the late 1970s, a very trendy French made chucker boot with a wedge sole and in fire engine red. They came in a, a lot of psychedelic colors like red, blue, green. Rock stars like Elton John, Rod Stewart and David Bowie wore them. Then at Christmas 1978, I was hitchhiking my way through Spain when in the back streets in Madrid, I stumbled on a small shop that sold cowboy boots. Again, fashionable in the late 70s due to movies like Midnight Cowboy. Through a dramatic play of poor Spanish and mime and lots of no, no, ocho, es mucho largo, I eventually bought a pair of plain suede cowboy boots and I wore them for years after. Since then, of course, I've had other boots. My Timberland boots were an early buy. I've done a review of the classic yellow Timberland boot and I'll put a card up there if I know how. Um, and I'll certainly put a link in the description below if you want to watch that review. And of course, being Australian, I've got my RM Williams when they gave me my citizenship papers. I've also done a review of my RMs and I'll link to it up there as well and down below. That's a longish story to say that while I've owned boots for a long time, I really didn't know what I was doing. It wasn't until early um, 2021 in the midst of some COVID enforced online shopping that I discovered Goodyear welted boots, specifically with my purchase of uh, my Thursday Captain boots. Yeah, I did a review of that also. It's up there. So you'll forgive me for reviewing a boot that I don't know too much about because I got it before I was properly educated. I did, however, I did, I did want to include some boots that maybe enthusiasts might sniff at, but others might take an interest in and I think they'd like to know. Now, I bought this pair from Amazon because I had a hankering for another cowboy boot after my fond memories of the Spanish pair. These cost me 255 Australian dollars on Amazon, but I noticed they aren't available uh, on Amazon at the moment, so I'll put a link to the Soto site itself below in the description. Now, let's talk about Soto. From what I can gather, the people behind Soto have owned a shoe store since 1991. And hearing what customers wanted over time, it seems they decided to make their own boots. And in 2001, in order to meet customer demands for value, they uh, made Soto boots. They call themselves a vertically integrated company. And by that, I mean they make the boots and sell them direct to consumers, uh, thus avoiding the middlemen. They sell online direct to the customer on, on their website and also in original shoe stores that they owned. Okay, let's take a look at this boot. As you can see, it's a pretty traditional Western or cowboy boot. It has a 13 inch shaft and a rounded toe, to me a little less aggressive than the really pointy toes and some. I have no idea what leather this is, except that it is bovine and it's in what they call crazy horse. I think crazy horse is sometimes used when people mean distressed. I'll talk about crazy horse leather in a minute. On this boot, it's a pretty ordinary leather, nothing bad about it, quite supple and yet holds its shape, but nothing particularly outstanding about it either. There's western style stitching on the vamp and up the shaft, uh, and while it is contrasting, it's not shouting out in a really different colour, and most of it is under the pants leg, so I can live with that. My Spanish boots had no decorative stitching at all, and I was looking for something similar. This'll do. The boot is fully leather lined, Again, no idea what the leather is inside, but it is soft and comfortable inside. Uh, the insole is leather, not a lot of shock absorption. It has uh, two inch cowboy or riding heels, uh, pretty nice in my opinion, and it's on a leather outsole. 
Now, in my research, I found that cowboy boots were generally either Goodyear welted or hand welted. Hand welting is a kind of uh, similar to Goodyear welting, except that the rib is not sewn onto the insole, but is actually carved directly on the insole. A rib is a piece of material sewn onto the uppers and insole, which is then sewn to the welt in order to make the construction. <clears throat> I don't know which these are. You can see the welt. You can see the stitching on the welt. You can see the stitching on the outsole. But that doesn't necessarily rule out um, uh, non-Goodyear welting. Some of them are faked. The other boots, though, are Goodyear welted. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say these are Goodyear welted. The soles, as you can see, are leather, and they came oily. So I suspect they may be waterlocked soles. Waterlocked leather soles are treated with oil, infused really, so that the leather is protected, made to feel soft and reasonably wear-resistant. Uh, wear I happen to like leather-soled shoes. They're comfortable to me, and these were not particularly slippery, especially after a few wears and they got scuffed, as you can see. This Odessa boot is made in Mexico, and from what I can see, wearing them uh, in, in these last couple of years, there's not that much in the way of QC issues. There was some loose stitching. I, I can't remember where now. I think it might have been on the shaft. But it wasn't particularly bad. And it did only cost me 250 Aussie dollars. My message to all boot buyers. You do get what you pay for. Don't expect a Mercedes when you buy a Toyota. So on to leather care. Now before I go on, I hope you're liking this video. If you are, do me a favour and click on the like button below. And I will be adding more boot reviews, including those of my 4050 pairs of Goodyear Welted and Heritage boots. So if you don't want to miss those, how about clicking on the subscribe button as well. On to leather care. Um, how do I talk about leather care when I'm not quite sure what leather this is? Well, it's a distressed bovine leather. They call it Crazy Horse. And it is similar to my Chippewa service boots in Crazy Horse. So let's go with that. First, Crazy Horse leather is not made from horse hide. It's called Crazy Horse because it was used to make horse saddles. If it is Crazy Horse leather, it would be full grain leather, smooth, some say corrected, a bit like Nubuck, and then waxed, unlike Nubuck. This treatment makes it tough, resilient to nicks and scuffs, and gives it a smooth but matte appearance. It can look distressed right from the get-go. In caring for Crazy Horse, the advice is not to use detergents to clean it. Just wipe with a damp cloth. You can use a suede brush to brush off some deeper scuffs and marks. Uh, conditioning is best with a leather balm, avoiding very waxy products like polishes. My go-to Venetian shoe cream is probably not the best here, a little too waxy. In this case, I've used R.M. Williams' saddle dressing to no bad effect. I think you can also use something like Renapur Leather Balsam. I'll put a link to both products in the description below. Let's take a look at how they fit. On the Amazon site, most of the reviews say to size down. That's true, these are size large. I bought a US 8, which is my usual size for American boots, at least lace-up service and work boots anyway and I'm an 8.5 US true to size on the Brannock device. I think I could have got away with a 7.5 because these are big and they're wide to boot. I didn't have any break-in issues. The leather was supple and soft enough. The last suited my foot shape with a little insert and a slight cork padding in the insole and the waterlock leather soles and the insert gave me enough shock absorption. I'm pretty sure there's a shank in there that gives me uh, enough arch support. All in all, a pretty comfortable boot. Now, usually at this stage, I'll talk about what outfits might go with the boot. All I can say here is to quote Homer Simpson. Duh, it's a cowboy boot, and it's in distressed leather. I know you can wear cowboy boots with a suit, but surely only if they're in a smooth leather or some impressive crocodile or something. You cannot wear this with a suit. What can you wear it with? Duh, jeans. Enough said. Let's take a look at the value. They're 250 Australian dollars. On the Soto website, they're shown as sold out, but they're listed at US 150 dollars. 
Now, if you've come here from a shopping center or the mall and you're comparing what you saw there in a shop there with these, they sound expensive. But take my word for it. As a Goodyear welted boot made of full grain leather, that is not expensive. In fact, they're pretty cheap. And so you get what you pay for. These are not Takovas. They're not Lucchese. They're not even Ariat. Those are good boots, but at a different price point. You get what you pay for. If you can get them, are they worth 150 US dollars? Yeah, I'd say so. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from some cowboy, cowboy boot experts out there. So there, my review of the Soto Odessa cowboy boot. In one sentence, they were kind of what I was looking for, and at $250, yeah, I'm okay with them. Hey, listen, I hope you liked the review. As I said, not the usual type of boot I'd review, but I have them. Others might want to buy them, so I'll put this review up. But next, to some of the good stuff. Next week, I'm going to upload my unboxing of the Grant Stone Diesel Boot in Tan Essex. And after that, I'm going to review my Thursday boot company Wingtip Boots in Dark Oak. I've been wearing those for a year now, so I'll let you know what I think. Don't miss that one. Click on the like and subscribe buttons below and stay booted. I'll see you soon.